Welcome back. Okay, so uh, Matt Vemichkov. Now, what's interesting with Matt Vemichkov is that in the draft, he should probably go as high as four. Uh, but I look at San Jose and I say to myself, you know, San Jose's drafting at four. I don't think they're going to draft a guy who's not going to come over until 2026 at the earliest. Uh, the uncertainty about Michkov is probably going to scare teams off that are looking for results now. And there are enough good players in this draft that you can justify passing on Michkov today. You may not be able to justify it four years from now, but since general managers tend to not last that long in those jobs generally anyways, you may not want to pick up a guy who's not coming over until a few years from now anyways because you may not be there anymore. Uh, but Beechkov is highly ranked. Number four in elite prospects, number three on hockey prospect, number four on McKean's, and number four on Bob McKenzie's list. Now, his weight, it depends on who you ask. Apparently, 148 pounds on the uh, elite prospect site. Hockey prospect has him listed as 160 pounds, and I've seen him listed as high as 172 pounds. Odds are he's probably putting on a lot of weight, and that, that does tend to happen with, with players as they get older they will add that muscle mass and become a little more difficult to play against, which reports would seem to state Michkov has. Now, the comparables with Michkov are ones that you might expect of a high-end Russian prospect. Kucherov, uh, Kaprizov, and he's seen as being really, really good as a goal scorer and just as an overall offensive player. Uh, his skating is above average. It's not elite, so it's not considered that he's a fantastic skater, but he's a good skater. And the thing with him is he's got the excellent vision on the ice. So, you know, and quickness in around the net. Once he's get once he gets near the net, good good luck keeping the puck out. Uh, he has an excellent shot and his release is seen as elite. Uh, so he will be one of those guys that at the NHL level, that one timer is going to be absolutely insane. And most scouts seem to project him to be one of the better goal scorers in the NHL. Uh, once his development is is done, that he should be on that same level. He should be top 10 in goals in the NHL. Uh, he also works well away from the puck. Uh, he's not shy about board play, uh, checking. None of that bothers him. Uh, he's played against men. He hasn't had a problem with it. Uh, and he shoots from all over the ice, like Cole Caulfield. So there really is a lot to like with this player. Um, the fact that he's a winger might have caused him to dra drop a little bit too in the draft. And I only say that because... Very often we'll see centers end up getting taken earlier than we expect and wingers will end up dropping back. <clears throat> but if not for the contract that he has with the KHL, I wouldn't be projecting him going to Philadelphia. What's interesting is uh, he has, you know, the, the strong board play, the excellent passing, everything offensive is in his favor. But there is that uncertainty. And then the other thing, too, that's being said about him, and I, I can't lock down exactly where this is, is there's, there's rumors of a character issue that maybe he doesn't interview very well. Um, one scout I saw just said basically it doesn't seem like he's a very nice guy. And I know that seems minor, but character issues can cause a player to drop in the draft. Character issues can absolutely cause that. Now, whether it's real or not, that's really the question, right? I've seen players that, you know, there's been character issues raised on them, and I, I don't see it at the NHL level, and plenty of players... But we don't hear about character issues in the, the NHL level. Oh, there's some character issues. So the amount of talent this kid has is tremendous. Uh, he was compared to Bedard a lot. There were discussions about whether or not Michkov might end up being better than Bedard. A couple of years ago, I remember those discussions. I haven't heard that now, uh, but there is some discussion about how he probably would have been more in talks as the number two prospect in this year's draft class, if not for the KHL contract, if not for the uncertainty regarding Russian players. Now, last year, playing for SKA St. Petersburg, and that's where his contract is. Uh, 13 games, 2 goals, 3 assists, 5 points. This year, he only played 3 games with St. Petersburg, was loaned to Sochi. And when he was loaned to Sochi, his numbers went through the roof. 27 games, 9 goals, 11 assists, 20 points. Which may not sound like a lot to those of us who are NHL affiliated and NHL following and all of that. But for Michkov, that was a tremendous total for a teenager in the KHL, and so he's seen as pretty much being almost NHL-ready right now. Uh, but again, he has that contract until 2026 with St. Petersburg. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes, uh, whether or not he hits there. Do they loan him to Sochi again if he doesn't? Uh, but at any rate, that's where he's going to be playing. 
And I, I know that there are people... That, the one team that I see uh, being attached to picking him up might be Washington. Washington drafting right behind Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is in a position where they can draft a guy who it will be a few years before his contract is up. Uh, in that they've they've sold their fans on hay, so it's going to be a rebuild, but they, they want this done right. To me, Michkov kind of works, because if he's the best player available at, at seven, which he would be, if he drops all the way to seven, there's no doubt he'd be the best player available. Uh, I think Philadelphia takes him. And I think the fact that Washington's right behind him, I mean, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to say, well, if we get him, Washington doesn't. Uh, but yeah, he's he's got all the all the talent in the world, all the offense in the world. It is really a matter of where he ends up dropping to in the draft. I've seen some projections that he may drop out of the top 10. I can't see that because he has so much pure talent. Um, of course, I remember Kuznetsov dropping in his draft year for a similar reason that he wasn't going to be able to come over right away. And look how silly teams that drafted ahead of them looked uh, after Kuznetsov really did hit for the Caps when he came over. So we'll see. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How far does Michkov drop or does he end up getting taken at four by the Sharks? I can't see that because, again, to me it feels like the Sharks need a more immediate result. And I'll talk about Will Smith. Will Smith might be the better pick for them. Uh, but, yeah, so let me know your thoughts. And I, I know there's people that want to see Will Smith drafted by Philly just because of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air tie-in. And I get it. I get it. The idea of a guy named Will Smith coming out to the, the theme from Fresh Prince. I'm, I, I really think that would be great too, but I, I can't see Will Smith falling that far down. But let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.